Okay, so this video was slightly ill-conceived. I really didn't plan ahead, which I try and do, and then usually I veer off anyway. I completely veer off topic, and then I come around, and then I forget, and we go through it. Done it 200 and some odd times now, and here we are. Did not plan well at all. Uh, so, oof, let's see. Let's see what I might be able to recall about something I thought I might say. Uh, stopping in and asking to see my work. Um, we've started getting more and more interest. I've been with some really terrific people. I met the owners of a um, celebrity traveling um, art show company. Uh, I've met with them several met them several times. They they now know who I am, and it's pretty exciting because they really do only carry celebrity artists. But at least they know who I am. So fingers crossed. Um, we're. Uh, uh, Chasen is is um, uh, planning. We're planning a solo show. We're planning where to hang work. We're planning how to hang work. So I feel like I can get some footing, which has really lifted my heart tr quite a bit. Um, as as you know, w as with most working artists, most people you you know you you have to work other jobs um, to support yourself while you wait for your artwork to take off. And um, my fingers are crossed that in the next um, couple of months, the artwork does take off in a significant way here in Sarasota and anywhere that we can, you know, anywhere uh, that we're selling work um, because of now the, the excitement that is, that is building here where I live now. Um, but also, I mean, we've got Miami, we've got New York, we've got Newark, we've got um, Providence. And, you know, I think back to a year ago or two years ago or three years ago, you know, I had Blue Egg in Miami and my God, how lucky am I to have Jay there, um, to have my friend uh, Rafael Coelho up in New Jersey, um, my friend Todd and his husband Brian in Providence, and all these really wonderful people who, who like, like my work and support my work and understand it. And, you know, all these people watch me on YouTube and follow me on Instagram. And, you know, finally it feels like all of our waiting and, and our concerted efforts and energies um, have the chance to really pay off in, in a major way. Uh, uh, Chasen's is a um, well-regarded gallery. They've been around here in Sarasota off and on for 15 years. Well, they were here for 15 years, then they packed up for a bit, now they're back. They've been, you know, a knockout gallery in Richmond. They carry master works, master's works, as well as contemporary artists. And one of their, their highest seller, my friend Sue, is the reason I'm with them, and I'm very lucky. Um, her work, her contemporary abstract paintings are, are extraordinary. Sue, oh, please don't ask me to pronounce this. Sue Janenowick, I can't, I can't pronounce it at all, and, and I'll find her profile and show it to you next time. But, um, yeah, uh, I've met some really fantastic people who, and people who are so interested in my work that they're setting up um, private viewings, appointments for private viewings, and Jason is more than happy to accommodate anyone, as is Jay in Blue, Blue Egg in Miami. Um, they're, both galleries are more than happy to set up um, uh, private viewings of my work, which sounds super lofty, considering, you know, a year, two years ago, I was like crying in my oatmeal in my cockroach-infested apartment. It sounds super lofty to say that, that you, you can set up a private viewing, but it is absolutely no problem whatsoever. Also, all the people that I work with, the people who carry my art, and have been, you know, working really hard to represent me. They also, or my work rather, they, um, and me, because I'm cute and charming, um, but they, uh, they also take payment plans. That's something that's been very, very, very important to me. I've um, tried to work with galleries who don't take payment plans, who don't regard the uh, working person who doesn't have, you know, X amount of dollars in their bank account to spend on, on something as luxurious as art. They don't expect, they, I've worked with people who don't respect that, respect the working person, and don't respect the person who is willing to commit and, and take 12 months, you know, t take, 
take money out of their paycheck for 12 months to pay for a piece, piece of work. So I'm really glad to be on solid ground with, with people who do that. It's extremely important to me. Um, everyone should be respected. Everyone should be considered um, a potential uh, buyer, investor, customer, um, and everyone's you know investment should be should be respected. And you know it's very it's just important to me. Uh, when I started buying other people's work, um, that's how I could buy it was in payments or buying prints. You know something else is very very important to me. Uh, art has always been artwork. Original artwork has always been out of my grasp, as it is with most people working nine to five jobs. But here we are. We're working with solid galleries, who um, who are respectful enough to work with people who want to invest in in art. So anyway, behind me is is uh, one of several larger pieces I've done. This is, um, I'm working on, rather, um, or something like that. Anyway, this is Candy Dish. Candy Dish is a drag artist out of Providence, Rhode Island. And the Providence, Rhode Island uh, drag and LGBTQ community, a transgender community, um, the fringe community, has been kind enough to, to acquiesce to every request when I asked if I could paint paint people. And Candy Dish is one person I've been wanting to paint for about two years, this particular uh, painting thing. Anyway, this particular fig figure painting I've been wanting to do for about two years, but I couldn't afford the canvas, and I wasn't in a good place to do it. But now I am. Oh my god, now I am. So I've been working, um, and she's almost completed. Uh, and I was down to Chasen the other day, and we were trying to figure out which of two walls we could hang her on. You can't see the floor, but I'll give you an idea of the height. She's eight feet high. It's two canvases um, that are four feet by five feet, so she's eight feet high, five feet wide. And I like to do that because it makes transportation easier, splitting the canvases up, the, you know, the, the portrait up makes uh, transporting uh, the canvas easier, shipping if it needs to be done easier and less expensive, and also it makes it more interesting for me, which is the most important thing. Um, these just, they allow me to play tricks with my head and make painting more of an adventure, which is a big thing for me. But so Candy is kind of big, and I have to prop her up on chairs and stuff because I don't own... Uh, easels. I don't care about them, so I put them up on boxes and chairs. Um, the other night was my third night in a row painting her cape, painting Candy's cape. And I believe Candy's John, uh, boy name is John. You'll have to excuse me, it's been a few years. But, um, so I'm just going to refer to him as, and her as Candy, um, the character's name. But uh, I spent three nights, about 18 hours, 15 to 18 hours, just trying really hard to get the cape correct, to get it to feel like folds, a wrinkly, folded up, messed up piece of cloth that was unfolded and thrown on this terrific character that Candy made. Um, I managed to not lose my patience, which is a miracle. I managed to not throw paintbrushes at the, the canvas, which is a miracle. I managed not to scream and yell, because I know that with every brush stroke, um, and with every time I wipe down that brush stroke and try it again, I'm getting closer and closer to it clicking in my head and clicking on the canvas. So I've hung in there. As I said, she's not totally done. There are more folds. There are more highlights that have to go in. But I'm closer. And then I'm, today I'm going to start on the bottom so I can start, you know, bringing the entire painting together. Painting cloth is not easy. But a few years ago in a painting called My Pet, which is in Virginia, um, uh, with a clicker in Virginia, I was painting this young girl holding a cat, a kitten, and she had folds in her shorts that I found really compelling. And so I worked and I worked and I worked until I figured out how to use those, how to develop those folds. So now when I get stuck, and I managed to do it, I think. Now when I get stuck, I refer 
you know, I get stuck like I was the other night, I go back to my pet to remind myself, how did I do this? How did I paint that? And I also pay attention to the reference material. When I was first learning to do anything, paint, draw, um, you know, like with every kid, the, the, my art teacher would say over and over again, really look at the reference. Really look and pay attention to the reference. But what I tell people is, listen to the reference, hear the reference, relax with the reference material. It's talking to you, just like the paint and the mediums and the canvas. They're talking to you. They just need you to listen. Relax your mind, relax your head. Don't do what you think you see, but really relax and listen. Pay attention. You know, see what's there, but through your mind and heart. So here we are. My mind and heart started to figure out how to do little folds. I went back, well, I was confused. I went to my pet, referenced the my pet, blew it up, kept, you know, my phone, kept looking at the folds, and I went, oh yeah, dark on dark, making it deeper and darker in certain areas. Slightly lighter in certain areas, slightly lighter in certain areas in the dark areas. Slightly lighter in the light areas. And instead of being clever, which I was trying to be, I, when I was trying to be clever, I had this in yellows, mimicking and mocking the background because I wanted a significant difference between the top half of the painting and the bottom half. So I was trying to be clever. I'm like, this yellow is going to be awesome. This yellow is going to work. And people are going to think I'm a genius. Well, this genius was screwing herself up. So I eliminated all the yellow, and I went back to, you know, grays, grays and darks and whites and lights. You can see a little bit of the yellow shining through. And that little bit of yellow is referencing the top half of the painting and the bottom half of the painting. So I still got that balance, I still got that flow, but I also have something that's, you know, slightly more realistic and not quite so stupid and, and not witty, as I was trying to do with the all yellows. And today I'm going to go into the blues and get those little doodads done, and I'll show you one other trick. I was really, really, really struggling. I had a teacher because she wasn't popping. She wasn't popping out as she is now. You know, when uh, when I was in um, when I was in college, going to the Boston Mu Museum, no Vesper George, a school that's no longer around. It's now a condominium, but Vesper George School of Commercial Art. I had a figure drawing teacher who's a brilliant man, brilliant artist. You know, he's with the Copley Society in Boston. He's genius. But he said to me, we don't need to outline our figures. We don't need to draw outline. And I was like, blah, 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 whatever, dude. I tried to listen to him. I tried to hang on to, I hear his words sometimes. We don't, we don't. Well, actually, I do. I do. I do outline my figures. I do outline the, the um, uh, whatever it is I'm painting, whatever the, the substance material is, like the cape. Outline it in darks. Outline them in lights because they have to pop. They have to pop. Even in real life, even in real life, our mind understands a subject, what we're looking at, because there are dark lines around it. There are light highlights that help to define it against the wall, the tablecloth, the rug, whatever, the sky. So, screw you, teacher from Vesper George. I'm outlining because I'm a rebel. But I outlined Candy Dish with a white line. With a white line. Different shades of white, but white. And now I'm going in and I'm adding tiny little smatterings of yellow. So I continue to mock, not mock, mimic and reference the the almost celestial yellows up above. Now I told you that I, I went back and found my pet online and was using her, using that painting, to remind me how to paint cloths because I quite frequently forget what I've already done and what is helpful. But I also, I remembered, I learned how to paint cloth from looking at Dali. I don't like everything Salvador Dali did. 
I think it was kind of silly, some of it. But then again, when we look at it, you know, we're looking at it in a rear view mirror. If we were there at the time when Dali was alive, what he was doing was revolutionary. He also did acid and some other drugs, I learned last night, um, but because I was talking to someone who knew him quite well, which would explain a lot of his artwork. But at the time, his stuff was absolutely revolutionary. And I think that's what helped propel him, that and his wife and people who, you know, really help support him and promote him and push him so that he could focus on the work. You know, the revolutionary ideas and really, really great support system helped to propel him into an international light. Like I said, rear view mirror, some guy going like this on a copper plate and then printing it looks a little ridiculous to us. But at the time... It was extraordinary. And last night I was standing with Dali's work, talking to this woman who knew him and saying, I learned how to paint folds in fabric because of your neighbor and former friend and your father, one of your father's best friends. She didn't really care at all. Neither did the man who was representing her. But it was important for me to say out loud to somebody who knew him. And I did. Check that goal off. Anyway, I'm going to get to work on Candy Dish. And uh, hopefully this hot spot has been working. Um, if you get a chance, if you're in Sarasota, go to Chasing Galleries. Because they've got Miro, Picasso, um, Dali, and Matisse. Some of the prints, are uh, their original prints, hand-colored from Dali himself, from Miro, from Picasso. Who was I looking at? I was looking at a hand-drawn Picasso last night, uh, framed. And I just stood there, again, not a super fan of Picasso, but we're looking in a rear-view mirror. But I was standing there in front of it, Picasso, it was a still life that he had drawn. And he had broken it down into basic shapes. Basic shapes. With lights and darks. And I was blown away. Here's a man who achieved heights I hope for, you know, I work for. And this tiny, little, simple drawing on a piece of brown paper that was sitting in a frame and was selling for somewhere around 200 grand blew me away. And also kind of blew me away that my stuff's hanging there too, right next to them. It's so fantastic. But anyway, if you're in if you're in Sarasota, uh, Chasing Galleries, if you're in Richmond, Virginia, Chasing Galleries, extraordinary work. But also make a point, if you can, of going to Blue Egg in Miami. Great contemporary um, abstract art. Unbelievable. Un like, some of the stuff that comes out of that place. Again, extraordinary. Um, anyway, i got to get to work because I'm kind of babbling now. Mm, time to eat some more peanut butter and drink some more coffee and, and work. Anyway, ciao. Ciao. Okay, come on. Little legs. <laughs>